Captain Michael Torres paced the narrow confines of his ready room aboard the USS Vanguard, a steely glint in his eyes that matched the cold metal walls surrounding him. The deep space starship, one of humanity's finest, had been patrolling the outer sectors of known space, a buffer zone against the unknown and potentially hostile territories beyond. Today, routine had shattered spectacularly. Just hours earlier, the Vanguard had encountered a previously unknown alien species, the Zorvani. Initial communications had been a mix of curiosity and tense diplomacy. The Zorvani, with their sleek, angular ships and advanced technology, had approached with a confidence that bordered on arrogance. Dr. Lena Kim, the ship's chief xenologist, had been the first to establish a rough communication line using the Universal Translator. The conversation had started promisingly, with exchanges of cultural and scientific information. However, the tone shifted dramatically when the Zorvani commander, speaking through the static of the comms unit, demanded Earth's immediate surrender and submission to the Zorvani hegemony. The crew had watched in disbelief as the alien commander outlined their terms, confident in their technological superiority and dismissive of humanity's capabilities. It was a miscalculation that would cost them dearly. Torres stopped pacing and turned to face his senior staff assembled in the room. His voice was calm but carried an undeniable edge. Prepare all hands. This is not a drill. We've been cordial, but it's clear the Zorvani underestimate us. They want to show a force and we'll give them one they won't forget. Commander Sarah Chen, the ship's second-in-command, nodded, her expression grim but determined. All departments are at battle stations, Captain. Shields are at maximum and all weapon systems are primed. Torres gave a curt nod, his mind racing through scenarios. Good. I want short-range fighters on standby and get me a direct line to Earth Command. They need to know what we're dealing with. As Torres and his crew braced for the response, the view screens flickered to life, showing the formidable Zorvani fleet maneuvering into an offensive formation. Their ships, larger than any terrestrial counterpart and bristling with unknown armaments, were an imposing sight. Yet there was no fear in Torres's eyes, only the resolve of a man who had faced the unknown many times and had never flinched. Broadcast this to the fleet, he said, stepping up to the communications panel. This is Captain Michael Torres of the USS Vanguard. We stand on the edge of human space, guardians of our world and defenders of our people. The Zorvani have made their intentions clear, and so shall we. We do not seek conflict, but if it comes to our door, we will answer with all the might humanity can muster. Let's show them what we're made of. As the Zorvani fleet moved closer, the tension aboard the USS Vanguard reached a palpable level. Lieutenant Commander Rajiv Singh, the tactical officer, closely monitored the alien ships, noting their sleek designs and the pulsing energy signatures that hinted at advanced propulsion and weaponry. Captain, the Zorvani fleet is in position. It looks like they're preparing for a first strike. Captain Michael Torres stood firm, his gaze fixed on the main view screen displaying the Zorvani formation. Rajiv, deploy our defensive drones and ready the electromagnetic pulses. If they fire, I want us to be ready to disrupt their targeting systems. Rajiv nodded, quickly relaying orders. Within moments, the space around the vanguard was dotted with small agile drones, forming a protective barrier against incoming attacks. On the bridge, Commander Sarah Chen coordinated with other ships in the human fleet, ensuring that their movements were synchronized. All vessels report ready, Captain. We're as prepared as we'll ever be. Torres took a deep breath, his mind racing through every possible outcome. Open a channel to the Zorvani commander, he said, his voice calm but authoritative. The communications officer quickly complied, and the face of the Zorvani commander appeared on the screen, his features sharp and his eyes revealing a hint of surprise. Human vessel, you are outmatched. Why do you resist? Surrender now, and we will spare your species the destruction of war. Torres stared back, unflinching. We've survived every challenge thrown at us from our own planet and beyond. We will not surrender our freedom or our future to threats. Withdraw your fleet, or we will defend ourselves. The Zorvani commander sneered, a soundless gesture that transcended language barriers. So be it, human. You will learn the cost of your arrogance. As the transmission ended, the Zorvani fleet launched the first salvo a series of bright projectiles that streaked towards the human ships. Torres's voice echoed throughout the vanguard, a clear, commanding tone. All hands brace for impact, shields up, return fire. The vanguard shook as several projectiles made contact, but the shields held, 
dissipating the energy blasts across their surface. In response, the Vanguard's weapon systems sprang to life, firing a barrage of hypervelocity missiles enhanced with the latest Earth military technology. The Zorvani shields flickered under the onslaught, revealing gaps in their defenses. Singh quickly exploited these, directing fire to the most vulnerable points. Direct hits on their lead ships, Captain. Their shield integrity is dropping. Torres nodded, watching as the human fleet began to push back against the alien aggressors. Keep up the pressure, target their command ship, disable it if possible. Ensign Harper, one of the Vanguard's best pilots, took her fighter squadron deep into the fray, weaving through the chaos of battle. Over the comlink, her voice was steady. Squadron, form up on me. Let's give them something to think about. Her ship darted forward, followed closely by her squadron, targeting the Zervani's flank. Their coordinated strikes added to the confusion among the alien ships, further disrupting their formation. Back on the vanguard, Torres watched as the battle unfolded, his crew working with precision and determination. Each report of damage or enemy movement was met with immediate action, the human fleet slowly but surely gaining the upper hand. This is our stand, Torres said, his voice resolute over the ship's communication system. Today we show the galaxy that humanity will not bow down. Keep fighting and hold the line. As the vanguard and its fleet continued their relentless assault, the Zorvani's initial confidence waned, replaced by a growing realization that they had underestimated the humans' will and capability to fight. The battle was far from over, but the humans had made their message clear. They would not go quietly into the night. The USS Vanguard, surrounded by the rest of the human fleet, continued to unleash a relentless barrage against the Zorvani forces. With their flagship's shields flickering and failing, the Zorvani found themselves reeling under the unexpected ferocity of the human counterattack. The aliens who had approached Earth with the expectation of an easy conquest were now entangled in a brutal battle for survival. On the bridge, Captain Michael Torres stood with unwavering focus, directing his crew with precision. Lieutenant Jones, keep those railguns firing. Target any ship that tries to reinforce their flagship. We can't let them regroup. Lieutenant Commander Rajiv Singh updated the tactical display, his eyes scanning quickly over the positions of both fleets. Captain, we've managed to isolate their flagship from the main fleet. It's vulnerable. Torres nodded sharply. Prepare a boarding party. We'll take the fight to them. It's time they understood the true cost of their arrogance. Sergeant Liam Brooks, the leader of the Vanguard's Marine Detachment, was called to the bridge. Receiving his orders, he began assembling a team of his best soldiers. Clad in powered armor, they moved to the airlock, ready to launch a daring raid on the disabled Zorvani flagship. Meanwhile, Ensign Harper and her squadron provided cover, diving through volleys of enemy fire to strike at Zorvani ships attempting to cover their flagship's retreat. Her ship rocked as a nearby blast clipped her wing. Harper to Vanguard, I'm fine. Keeping them busy here. Back on the vanguard, the mood was one of grim determination. The human ships had suffered damage, but the spirit of the crew remained unbroken. As the boarding shuttles launched, everyone on board held their breath, knowing the crucial nature of this maneuver. The shuttles hurtled through the chaos of battle, evading debris and incoming fire, before docking with the Zorvani flagship. Sergeant Brooks and his team breached the hull, entering the enemy ship with weapons at the ready. The inside of the Zorvani ship was starkly different from human designs, with angular corridors and a chilling bioluminescent glow. Team 2, secure the engine room. Team 3, with me to the bridge, Brooks commanded, leading his soldiers through the labyrinthine corridors. The Zorvani soldiers, though initially taken aback, quickly mounted a fierce resistance. Firefights broke out along the corridors, the sound of gunfire and the whir of plasma weapons filling the air. Despite the intensity of the defense, Brooks and his team pushed forward, leveraging their superior training and tactics. As Brooks' team neared the bridge, the resistance grew more desperate. A fierce battle ensued, with both sides suffering casualties. Finally, after a grueling exchange, Brooks and his team breached the bridge, securing it with precision and efficiency. Brooks approached the Zorvani captain, who stood defiantly. Surrender and end this now. You've lost. The Zorvani captain, his expression unreadable beneath his helmet, finally nodded, deactivating his weapon. We underestimated humanity, he admitted, speaking through a translator. We will surrender. 
As the news of the successful boarding and the Zorvani surrender spread throughout the fleet, cheers erupted on the vanguard. Captain Torres allowed himself a brief smile. Signal all ships the enemy flagship has fallen. The battle is ours. With the Zorvani flagship under human control and its captain in custody, the rest of the Zorvani fleet faced a critical decision. Their command structure shattered, and morale plummeting, the remaining ships hesitated. This pause gave the human forces a crucial advantage. Captain Michael Torres seized the moment to solidify their victory. Rajiv, coordinate with the rest of the fleet. I want a full press on their remaining forces. No let up. Lieutenant Commander Rajiv Singh acknowledged with a brisk nod, his fingers flying over the tactical console to relay orders. The human fleet, energized by their success, moved in a coordinated formation, tightening the noose around the bewildered Zorvani ships. On board the Zorvani flagship, Sergeant Liam Brooks and his team worked to secure sensitive information and technology. We've got access to their data cores, Brooks reported to Captain Torres via comlink. It looks like we might be able to learn a lot about their tech and tactical capabilities. Excellent work, Sergeant. Keep me updated on what you find and make sure there are no self-destruct mechanisms active, Torres replied, always mindful of potential surprises. Meanwhile, Ensign Harper, her fighter wing now bolstered by additional squadrons, led a daring assault on a group of Zorvani cruisers trying to regroup and counterattack. Darting through enemy lines with audacious maneuvers, Harper and her pilots inflicted severe damage. Keep hitting them hard, team. Don't give them a moment to breathe, she encouraged over the squadron channel, her voice a beacon of aggression and determination. The Zorvani, now realizing the direness of their situation, began to scatter, attempting to escape to hyperspace. However, the human fleet was relentless. Utilizing the data gleaned from the flagship, they targeted the Zorvani's engines and hyperspace capabilities, effectively grounding the fleeing ships. Vanguard to all units, target their propulsion systems. Let's mop this up and get everyone home safe, Torres ordered, directing the final phase of the battle from the heart of the action. As the last of the Zorvani cruisers was disabled, a somber reality settled over Captain Torres and his crew. They had won a significant victory, but at a considerable cost. The bridge was quiet, the usual post-battle elation muted by the toll of their efforts. Torres stood, looking out at the debris field that had once been a formidable enemy armada. Set course for Earth, he finally said, his voice reflecting a mix of victory and veneration for the fallen. It's time to go home. The return journey to Earth was a time for reflection and recuperation. The crew tended to the wounded, repaired the ship, and analyzed the captured Zorvani technology. Insights into their propulsion and weapon systems promised to advance human technology by leaps, but the ethical implications of using enemy tech were not lost on Torres. As Earth's blue orb grew larger in their view, the reality of their return brought mixed emotions. They were returning as heroes, but the shadow of war hung heavily over their achievements. Upon entering Earth's orbit, the vanguard was greeted by a flotilla of media ships, and the airwaves were filled with broadcasts heralding the bravery of Torres and his crew. The world was eager to celebrate their defenders, yet Torres knew this victory was but a chapter in the ongoing saga of humanity's place in the stars. The battle against the Zorvani had turned the tide in favor of Earth, but the vastness of space held more secrets and potential threats. As the USS Vanguard entered the bustling orbit of Earth, a hero's welcome awaited. The ship, scarred by battle yet triumphant, symbolized a victory not just over the Zorvani, but over doubt and fear. Captain Michael Torres stood on the bridge, observing the celebrations planned on the surface, yet his thoughts were with those who couldn't join in the rejoicing, the crew members who had made the ultimate sacrifice. The ship docked at the International Space Station, transformed into a reception hub for the returning warriors. As the airlock opened, Torres was greeted by a swarm of dignitaries, military officials, and media personnel, all eager to capture the moment of triumph. Captain Torres, how does it feel to have defended Earth against such odds? One reporter asked, shoving a microphone in his direction. Torres paused, choosing his words carefully. It feels heavy. We've won, yes, but not without loss. Today we remember those who can't be here to celebrate with us. The mood shifted subtly, reflecting the solemnity of his statement. The celebrations continued but with a more respectful tone. Speeches were made, honoring the bravery of the Vanguard's crew and the sacrifices made. 
As Torres watched young faces in the crowd, he felt a deep responsibility to guide them away from unnecessary conflict. Behind the scenes, negotiations with the captured Zorvani leaders were underway. Humanity had to decide how to deal with the prisoners and the sensitive information they held. In a secure meeting room, Torres sat across from the Zorvani captain, now a prisoner of war. Your people will be treated with fairness under the laws of Earth, Torres assured him. But we need to understand why you attacked us and how we can avoid further conflict. The Zorvani captain, his posture defeated, nodded slowly. Our empire misunderstood your capabilities and intentions. We thought Earth would be an easy target, a quick conquest to bolster our resources. We were wrong. Torres listened intently, processing every word. The conversation that followed laid the groundwork for a potential peace treaty. It was clear that this victory was not an end, but a beginning. The start of a new diplomatic relationship that would require careful negotiation and mutual respect. Back on Earth, the engineering teams were busy dissecting the Zorvani technology. Advances in propulsion, weapons, and shielding were eagerly discussed in top-secret labs, with Torres receiving regular updates. Each breakthrough brought new possibilities and new questions about the ethical implications of using and developing alien technology. As the days turned into weeks, Torres found himself more in boardrooms, and less on the bridge. His role as a captain was evolving into that of a diplomat and strategist. The weight of his new responsibilities was immense, but necessary for forging a path forward. The public narrative celebrated the victory as a clear-cut triumph, but those involved knew the truth was more complex. The Zorvani were not mere villains. They were a complex civilization with their own fears and ambitions. Understanding this was crucial for building a lasting peace. The official debriefing with Earth's Defense Council was extensive. Torres, standing before a panel of global leaders, detailed the battle, the negotiations, and his recommendations for future defense strategies. We must be vigilant, he emphasized. We've shown that we can defend ourselves, but we must also work towards preventing war. Diplomacy must be our first line of defense. In the aftermath of the victory, the Earth was abuzz with discussions on security and diplomacy. The delicate balance of celebrating their success while preparing for any future threats was a constant topic among Earth's leaders. Captain Michael Torres found himself at the center of these discussions, his experience and insight invaluable in shaping Earth's new role on the galactic stage. As the weeks progressed, Torres worked closely with his team to integrate Zorvani technology into human systems, a task fraught with technical challenges and ethical dilemmas. We need to be cautious, he advised during a session with top engineers and scientists. This technology could advance our capabilities by decades, but we must ensure it's safe and doesn't compromise our principles. Meanwhile, the Zorvani prisoners, including their captain, were treated with a surprising degree of respect and dignity. Earth's leaders had chosen a path of reconciliation, hoping to set a precedent for how humans treated defeated foes. This approach was not without its critics, but Torres defended it vigorously in every briefing and interview. We must be better than our enemies, he often said. The rehabilitation of the Zorvani captain, now named Ambassador Zelkor, was a particularly poignant aspect of this new relationship. Zelkor was gradually introduced to human culture, politics, and ethics. He and Torres frequently engaged in long discussions about their respective worlds, each learning from the other. You have shown us a different way, Zelkor confessed during one of their meetings. Perhaps there is hope for a peaceful coexistence. These discussions were not just diplomatic niceties, but were part of a broader strategy to solidify an alliance. Earth's leaders were aware that the Zorvani Empire was vast, and the defeated fleet was just one part of it. Securing a lasting peace with the Zorvani could deter further conflicts and even lead to beneficial alliances. Back on the military front, Torres oversaw the training of special units equipped with Zorvani-derived technology. These units, known as the Vanguard Corps, were a new breed of peacekeepers, trained to handle both conventional and extraterrestrial threats. Torres watched proudly as the new recruits, inspired by the stories of the Vanguard's crew, trained vigorously. These young men and women are the future, he remarked to his old friend and second-in-command, Commander Sarah Chen. They will need to be ready for anything. The preparation proved timely. Intelligence reports soon indicated that a fringe faction within the Zorvani Empire was not pleased with the peace negotiations and was rallying for a renewal of hostilities. 
Torres, now a seasoned diplomat warrior, was quick to respond. Prepare the Vanguard Corps for deployment, he ordered, and set up a meeting with Ambassador Zelkor. We need to address this head on. The meeting with Zelkor was tense, with the ambassador clearly embarrassed and concerned about the rogue faction. They do not represent the majority, he assured Torres. But they are dangerous. I will help you stop them. With Zelkor's assistance, Torres and the Vanguard Corps launched a preemptive strike against the rogue faction's base, located on a remote asteroid. The operation was swift and decisive, showcasing the effectiveness of human Zorvani cooperation and the prowess of Earth's new military technology. After the successful operation, Earth's stance in the galaxy was stronger than ever. Other alien races took notice and soon, delegates from various systems approached Earth to discuss alliances and trade. The victory against the Zorvani had opened new doors and new possibilities. After the decisive action against the Zorvani rogue faction, Earth's status in the interstellar community was significantly enhanced. The diplomatic victory and the successful integration of Zorvani technology catalyzed new relationships across star systems, heralding a new era for humanity. Captain Michael Torres, now a pivotal figure in Earth's strategic and diplomatic circles, found himself more in the role of a statesman than a ship commander. Torres attended numerous galactic councils, representing Earth alongside Ambassador Zelkor, who had become a close ally and friend. Their joint appearances were symbolic of the newfound cooperation between humans and Zorvani, setting a precedent for other species who watched Earth's rise with both interest and caution. Back on Earth, the benefits of peace and technological progress were evident. Cities became more efficient, cleaner, and safer with the adoption of advanced energy systems and defensive technologies. Public interest in space exploration and alien cultures flourished, leading to educational reforms that included interstellar studies in the curriculum. However, the peace was not without its challenges. Some factions within various alien communities viewed the rapid rise of Earth with suspicion and envy. Torres worked tirelessly to smooth over tensions, often engaging in delicate negotiations to assure other races of Earth's intentions. In one such conference on the neutral planet of Vorexis, Torres and Zelkor faced stiff opposition from a coalition of races wary of human expansion. Torres addressed the assembly with his characteristic resolve. We seek not to dominate but to cooperate. The challenges we face are universal, resource scarcity, environmental degradation, and the threat of rogue factions. Together we can find solutions that benefit all our people. His speech, broadcast across multiple star systems, was well received by many, gradually winning over skeptics. Meanwhile, Zelkor provided the necessary assurances from his side, confirming the sincerity of Earth's efforts from his own transformational experience. On the military front, the Vanguard Corps, now an elite unit within Earth's expanded armed forces, engaged in joint exercises with allied alien races, demonstrating Earth's commitment to collective security. Under Torres's guidance, these units not only showcased Earth's military might, but also its readiness to aid allies in need. Despite the political and military engagements, Torres was deeply involved in the technological advancements stemming from the Zorvani technology. He frequently visited research facilities, pushing for developments that were ethically sound and universally beneficial. His influence ensured that Earth's technological advancements were shared transparently with allies, fostering a spirit of mutual benefit and trust. As months turned into years, Torres saw his efforts bearing fruit. The galaxy seemed on the brink of a golden age of cooperation, spurred on by Earth's example and the diligent efforts of its representatives. Earth had not only secured a place among the stars, but was now a leading voice for peace and progress.